Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with the attack line for Thursday, April 26th, 2012. All right. Let's kick it over with the news on Britney, bitch. I don't know what I heard. It's like maybe like one or two weeks ago, there was a report that Jason Trawick, or Beyonce, was hoping to join Britney's conveyor ship with her dad. Well, yesterday at a corner room in Los Angeles, it was official. A Superior Court Judge Weaver Goetz approved a request for Britney's fiance and former lawyer and agent to become a co-conservator over the Grammy-winning single. He joins her father, Jamie Spears, in that role, and will have control over several decision-making aspects of her personal life, but not in managing her assets. Spears requested that Trayvick join a court conservatorship a few months after the couple engaged. They appeared in court earlier together this year, but the entertainer did not attend yesterday's hearing. She's been on a court order conveyorship since February 08. When her father stepped in, and Jamie is happy about it, saying that his lawyer was very happy to have Trayvick involved. The hearing was closed to the public. Now that Jason now not only engaged to Britney, but also part of the conveyor conservatorship or whatever it's called, it's now part of the Spears family more than ever. At least Jamie's approving it and happy to have Jason on board. No word on the engagement, but uh, the wedding. But congrats to Spears having a fiance now, total control, not just being a fiance. Now. Along with another fellow artist on RCA, because Britney's on RCA music now since they discontinued Jive. So she's on RCA alongside Usher. He's back with his new, well, club single. A few weeks ago, he released a song called Climax, a slow R&B jam that's heating up the R&B charts. But for people like me, who like good old dancey pop music, Usher returns with a new single called Scream. Off his brand new album, which he released a release date earlier this week. The album, the follow up to Wayman vs. Wayman, slash the remix vs., called Lucky for Myself, will be released on June 12th. The new song, Scream, is a techno dance heaven. Because he's been working with people like Dave Getter, who is collaborating on the album after the success of their single, Without You, from David's recent album. But David didn't produce this song, the new single, as produced by Max Martin, who has produced Britney's records, and Shellback. It is indeed a club banger, and I love it. So can't wait to hear more from the album, as the album is, of course, like I said, out in June. Single, out, maybe out on radio. I don't know when it's going to be on iTunes, but Usher said the single scream on iTunes is coming soon. So check it out. Now... On with some TV news on Dancing with the Stars. Now, we all know season 14's in the high gear. With, of course, down to, like, the final six or seven or so. And all the best people. Now, we I can do is give it a Melissa Gill, but we all set. But that's the deal. We've seen people go bye-bye too early. Like Sabrina Bryan, Brandy Little Kim. And, of course, last season, Jenna Phillips and Chris and Carl Lauren. Maybe they get another chance. There's been rumors that next season, season 15 of Dancing, will be an All-Stars edition. In my mind, they should get like all the best people that got out early, like the ones I mentioned, and more where that came from. And maybe like maybe one or two former champions. I heard Mario Lopez say on Weegis and Ke uh, with Kelly, without Weegis, uh, that he said that Dancing's already called them to be involved in season 15, which is, like I said, be an All-Star edition. We'll probably find out who will be involved in season 15 once this season's over. Probably that'll be the fall season. So, probably find out probably by summer who will be involved if this is an all star season, but we'll see what happens. If they all do an all star season, awesome. Can't wait to see it. Like I said, get some people that lost that deserved another chance. On the sports news, a lot of sports news starting with Madden 2013. Madden is, of course, a blessing and a curse. A blessing because it's, of course, one of the most popular sports franchises in all of the 
video game world since 1990 something, I think 93 or something, 92 or 93. It has become the most accomplished franchises in the history of video game sports. It is a curse, too, of course. The Madden curse has been shown for many people on the cover of several years. That year on the front, the next year you suck. Well, let's see if the curse will work on the newest Madden cover boy as voted on by the fans. For the first time since 2000, a Detroit Lions member will be a part of Madden. It'll be, of course, Megatron himself, Calvin Johnson, beating out Cam Newton of the Carolina Panthers to get the victory. Now it's a tough race, but we'll see if the curse affects Calvin, because a lot of Detroit Lions fans don't like the fact because they don't want the Lions to get cursed this year. Lions had a great showing last year, even making the playoffs. So now that Calvin's on the Madden cover, it could give Lions some superstitions about the Lions' chances this year, depending on how the Madden curse plays out for Calvin and Lions this upcoming season. Especially got a lot of home games, a lot of big games on the television. So, uh, but congrats to Calvin, but hopefully good luck on not continuing the Madden curse. There you go. Now, before we get to TNA Impact Wrestling PV for the night, a lot of WWE news. Uh, we're hearing that Extreme Rules, they had another match on WWE.com. It'll be a Divas title rematch between Beth Phoenix and Nikki Bella for the Divas Championship. We all saw what happened. Nikki Bella beat Beth Phoenix this past Monday. I heard that Beth Phoenix's injury was indeed fake. It was building, of course, Nikki getting the title, and I'm hearing Karma's coming back soon to go for the title. That's why Beth lost it. But we'll see what happens with Beth and Nikki, especially with rumors that the Bell is leaving, but may not happen now. Or maybe it will. It's just waiting for Karma to just beat the crap out of Nikki. So there you go. Now, on to some other news involving an Extreme Rules competitor. Brock Lesnar is supposed to feud against John Cena. He's been feuding with them. Let's see what happens in the match. Hope is better than the contract signing this past Monday in the match this Sunday at Extreme Wolves. I'm also hearing rumors that despite they're doing Extreme Wolves, they're focusing on SummerSlam. I'm hearing Randy Orton is going to feud with Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. <laughs> oh, that man doesn't suck. So there you go. But of course, today some shocking news came into the WWE camp. Wayne Mysterio has been suspended for 60 days for a wellness violation. Now that's weird, he's been injured for a while, and I don't know when he's coming back, but now he may not come back for a while because his comeback will be delayed because of his newest suspension. I think, he's been, I think he's been suspended before. I remember that, like the first time I got suspended for 30 days. I think that's when John Morrison beat him for the IC Championship, I think. And they were supposed to defend the title in a pay-per-view or something, then John Morrison beat him for it because he got suspended. That's why, I think it was like, well, maybe one or two years ago. But he said it was prescription, but we'll see what happens with this whole situation with Wayne now being suspended. I wonder how it'll delay us come back, but uh, see what happens there. But I think Wayne may get leaving soon, because he's old and he's get, getting injured. So we'll see what happens when he does come back, if he ever comes back at all, especially with this new development with this suspension. Now, on with our TNA Impact Wrestling PV for the night. And of course, open fight night is made by Hulk Hogan last week. We'll also see a gut check involving some new people auditioning. So there you go. Top five questions that must be answered tonight on Impact. Starting with question number five. Where we'll go down in uh, Rick Flair's tribute to Eric Bam. Now, the play big Eric Bischoff's last name because, like I said, they had the storyline going with Garrett and Eric at lockdown saying that if Eric's team lost, Eric wouldn't be able to use his last name anymore. Besides the fact he had to leave TNA Impact, which what happened? You saw a lot of bleeping for Eric Bischoff. And of course tonight, Rick Flair will honor Bischoff tonight. Eric Bischoff with an Eric Bischoff tribute to Rick Flair. I bet you Garrett will get involved and woo in it in some way, shape, or form. So there you go. With that, see what happens there. Question number four: What happened between AJ Styles, Kaz, and Daniels? The last week. 
Despite the technical difficulty with the AJ Ungo match, which is why I'm here, they're aiming the impact at 7 tonight from last week. We saw AJ get distracted by Kaz and Daniels because they found something that pissed AJ off. That's why Kaz has been allowing himself with Daniels. We didn't saw what happened. We didn't see the document that got AJ so flustered he lost to Angle. We will we find out tonight? Will we find out what's got AJ so flustered? We'll see what happens with AJ and Kaz and Daniels in that concurring storyline, which should end faster than that. I wish that storyline between AJ and Kaz and Daniels can end as can end soon, like that Chris Park's Abyss storyline is getting annoying. Those two storylines are the most annoying storylines right now. It's so AJ, Karras, and Daniels, and the whole Chris Park's looking for Abyss thing. We all know it's Abyss in disguise. So, that's my thoughts on that. So, we'll see what happens with AJ, Karras, and Daniels, where we find out what's got AJ so pissed, what's the paper that they found that they're hanging over AJ's head. We'll see what happens there. Question number two, will there be a confrontation between RVD and Bobby Wood? Now, last week we had a triple threat number one contenders match between uh, Jeff Hardy, RVD, and Mr. Anderson. It was a decent main event, and RVD got the victory. After a five-star frog splash, it was on Jeff Hardy. And now RVD gets a title shot against Bobby Wood at Sacrifice. We'll see if they get into some confrontation and start their feud heading towards Sacrifice. So, there you go. I'm happy all of these back and happy he's number one contender and hopefully he gets the title back. But I like Bobby Wood as a champ too, despite the fact he's been kind of a heelish guy, but he's had a decent one despite the cheating, so there you go. Speaking of the aforementioned sacrifice, question number two Will anything be named for sacrifice tonight? Well, like I said, we know the TNA World title match, but we don't know any of the other matches yet except for sacrifice. Maybe Bully Ray Austin Aries match, because their feud continued with what happened last week in a tag match. With Bully Ray holding the tights in a tag match, pinning Austin Aries. So we'll see what happens there. If anything else gets mentioned for a second. Then question number one. How will the first open fight night deal? Now we know that Hogan said that on open fight night, anybody can challenge anybody. There's been some dissection. There's been some detractors. But we'll see how this fails out. And Hogan said there will be a title match tonight. Besides the TV title match. That's all for mentioned. Since Hogan now made the rule that be defended every week now, making it less weaker than the Knockouts Tag Channel titles. But Hogan will name the champion and the challenger. So we'll see what happens tonight on that open fight night on TNA Impact Wrestling tonight at 9 8 Central on Spike TV. That's it for the Attack Live for today. I'll see you all later for my TNA Impact Wrestling review. With that in mind, you've all been attacked by the news from. Zach, thank you all very much for watching. See you all later. Yeah.